No matter what you do in life, whether you are a student or a teacher or a trainer or any other employee of a privately owned company or an organization, at some point you may be asked to perform a training for a new joining colleague or for a fellow student. And in such situations, you may be wondering what should be the very first step to make. And this is what we are going to talk about today, so stay tuned. Preparing a training is not as easy as it seems, because even if you are a specialist, an expert in the particular area, there can always be some details that you are missing in your knowledge. So before you start even thinking about performing a training, just make sure that you have all the knowledge gathered here, not only in some written, printed or web-based materials. You should know it yourself. This is going to make you in a much more comfortable situation as a trainer. This way, whatever happens in the training, whatever question is asked to you in the middle of the training, you will not have to worry that perhaps you are not well prepared for the training. So the very first step would be to get the right knowledge yourself and make sure that you do it right, that you get all the details from all possible sources and let someone else check your knowledge first just so that you are sure that you are not too subjective about evaluating your knowledge yourself. Once you have gathered all the necessary information, you have this knowledge which is necessary to perform the training, the very next step you need to take is to get the information about what the needs of your trainees are. So if you are going to train some students, learn what they need from you, learn what gaps in their current knowledge there are, so that you do not have to repeat the entire material. You do not have to provide them with some very basic training either. Every single training should be customized to the needs of the trainee. And in order to do that, it's a good idea perhaps to send a questionnaire to them, checking what they already know, asking them what they would like to learn from it. If there is a group of employees who have been directed to you by their manager, you can also speak to the manager and ask what this training should be based on in particular. This way, you are going to make sure that you are not providing the training on something that is obvious for them or not needed. Once you know their training needs, the next step would be to plan what you want them to learn in your training. Before you start even thinking about particular exercises, you may want to think of the particular skills they should gain in your training, some knowledge they should get from you. And it's necessary to make a list a very coherent list in which you're going to concentrate only on the most important, on the crucial pieces of information and on the most needed skills that they will acquire. In other words, you should prepare a training plan with some main points to cover. If it's going to make you feel better and uh, if it's going to make you feel a little bit more comfortable before the training, you can also write down some details that you want to include in the training as well. It could be a good idea, as long as you do not get too much into these details, because it's very easy to get lost and lose the track of time. After all, you are not going to have the entire day perhaps to train them. Maybe you have only a limited amount of time, like one hour or two hours. Then you need to be very specific what you need to cover in your training. Once you know the needs of your trainees, once you have planned what you want to train them on, the next step would be to gather the suitable materials to cover all of the information that you want to talk about in your trainings. And this is of the utmost importance that you choose only reliable sources of information. And of course, these sources of information, they may be based on your knowledge base articles at work if you have them. Perhaps you need to Google them up and browse the web for them. And also, maybe even especially in this situation, be particularly clear about what sort of information is needed and what is 
the rubbish because the internet is full of not important information or information from sources which are not very well established, not very well checked and they are not reliable. Sometimes the form may be attractive, but then when you get deeper into it, you'll see that there is not much theoretical scientific background behind it. From my perspective, it's a good idea to stay from these beautiful and yet empty sources of, sources of information as far as you can. If you have planned your training, if you have gathered all the necessary sources and materials, now it's the time for you to prepare exercises. Yes, that's right, because I don't believe in trainings in the form of a lecture, when you as a trainer only speak and talk, 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 talk for long, long hours. It will get you nowhere, it will be boring, it will be difficult to acquire this knowledge for your trainees. Rather than that, you should always think of the most possibly practical exercises that you can think of, exercises that are going to put some theory into action. This way you activate the brains, the minds of your trainees in such a way so that they will remember it for longer, they will gain the true knowledge out of your training and not only a bunch of theory. You want your colleague or your fellow student to actually be able to do something rather than just to have this theoretical knowledge. This is why the wider range of different exercises you prepare, the better for you and for your training. Something I like doing very much, and let's call it a bonus step, is to give the trainee a chance for some extra activities. Once the training is over, give them a chance, if they want to, to come back to some of these materials, maybe some extra uh, exercises you have for them, some self-checking exercises, some multimedia exercises, something that is web-based, something they can do in their own free time, in the comfort of their own room. Perhaps that would be a good choice for them. Give them a choice, give them an option to make this extra step just in order to become a better employee or a better student or to be better prepared for this particular topic. Now, do you have your own hints on how to prepare to a training? I would love to hear them. Please let me know in the comments. And if you haven't done it yet, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'll speak to you next time. Take care. Thank you.